first we're still in um, first let me see we're going to put down to I want to finish this word with you guys um, today so I was gonna leave it off but uh, we're in first we're still in first Samuel 15 but I want to drop down to verse 24 of first Samuel chapter 15 um, God is having me finish it, so I'm going to just go ahead and finish it. But Samuel said to him, wait, no, let's go to 24. And then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned, I have violated the Lord's command and your instructions. God's command and the prophet's instructions. He said, he, Saul said, I, I know I've sinned and I have violated the Lord's commands and the prophetic instructions. He said, I was afraid of the men and so I gave in to them. So here's a man who's saying, I, I was afraid of the other leaders. I, I was afraid of the other men. I was afraid of the other politicians, the other governors, the other bishops, the other pastors, the other famous people. I, I was afraid of them and because I was afraid of them, I had to do what it was that they wanted me to do and I had to ignore, this is what he said, I had to ignore the prophet and I had to ignore God. You you know that a man has, has missed it. He's missing it. He's missing it. He's close to judgment. He's close to God taking him and removing him when he disobeys not just the prophet, but he disobeys God. And he says, because I rather please men. I, I, I got to please men because I, I'm afraid of them. Mm. That's why people look at me all the time. They be like, girl, girl, you, you ain't afraid of them. No. I'm t I say what God tell me to say. But Samuel said to him, no, no, look, let's go back up again. Sorry, God. And then Sam, then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned. I have violated the Lord's command and your instruction. I was afraid of the men. And so I gave into them. And so then he says, now I beg you, forgive my sin, forgive my sin and come back with me so that I may worship the Lord. Forgive my sin because we all know that prophets can forgive sins. We, we either can forgive or we either can leave it as it is. And that's a whole nother lesson. Okay, but let's look at uh, verse 26 where I've been trying to get to the whole time. But Samuel said to him, I'm not going nowhere with you. I will not go back with you you have rejected the word of the Lord and the Lord has rejected you. As, verse 27, as Samuel turned to leave, because you know as prophets, we'll leave you quick. So as Samuel turned to leave, Saul caught Hold of the hem of his robe and tore it. Saul caught hold of the hem. Do you know what is in the hem of the priest, the hem of the prophet, the hem of the apostle, the hem of Jesus' garments? Do you do you understand what's in the hem, in the trimming, in the knitting, and the sewing, in the weaving, in, in the twining of the hem of an anointed person's garment? And the Bible says, hear it. his robe and it tore. Saul caught hold of the hem of his robe and it tore because Saul touched the anointed. Touch not my anointed, 
and do my prophet no harm. If we look right here in this text right here, we can clearly see the differences between types of anointings. The, the type of anointing that comes with a king has nothing to do with the type of anointing that comes with a prophet. When it is an authentic and a real prophet, kings and queens stand down to that. You never, ever, ever lay your hands on the garments of a prophet. And definitely not to tear it, to rip it. Tearing stuff apart. Tearing stuff apart. You didn't sew it. You didn't knit it. It wasn't yours to reap. And you tearing it. You ripping it. You trying to hold on to people who have walked away from you. You trying to hold on to prophets who have been told to walk away from you. And so when God gives a prophet a word and he tells the prophet to give you a word, if I give you a word and God gives me a word to give you, and after that word, God tells me to leave you and to stop crying over you, to, to stop weeping over you because you're hard-headed. You don't follow instructions or commandments. You, you want everything to be grace. And I understand it because I need a lot of God's grace too but i ain't never been foolish enough to say i want everything to be about grace that's when god starts to test the heart and see if you really love him that's why david said thy word have i hidden in my heart that i might not sin against you god all right as samuel turned to leave saul caught hold of the hem of his robe and tore it and samuel said to him the Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you today and has given it to one of your neighbors and has given it to one of your neighbors, to one better than you. God has taken all of the kingdom, all of the promise, all of the destiny, all of the purpose. He's taken it from the ones who can't follow commands and can't follow instructions. He's taken it from them and he's given it to somebody who's close to them. Mm, I feel the anointing of my God. He's taken it. He's he's taken it from one person, one man, one woman. They standing right there, and directly next to it is a neighbor, a person, a, a, somebody who God then chose. And the Bible says, and God told Saul, "I've taken everything that was yours, and I've given it to this man, another man." Mm, 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 mm. It's the same thing happened with it's the same thing happened with Samson. They said, I thought you you hated her. I thought you hated your wife. The way you treated her. The, the way you behaved. Samson. So the Bible says that when Samson went back to marry his wife, the father said. You better know who the father is. The father God said, the father, the father, the father said, surely I thought you hated her. So I gave her to your neighbor, your best friend, your companion, your brother. Oh, I already gave that away. You, it's already been given away. Ain't nothing you can do to get it back. And if that person want to act up and if that person don't want to follow the, the rules and commands of God, we'll just keep it moving. And God, adduce, God will keep doing what it is that he wants to do until God can find a man after his own heart. Until God can find a man who follows instructions, commandments and the Lord's word. Until God can find a woman that listens, that adheres to, that believes in him, that trusts in him. Until God going to keep it moving. What do you do when God keep it moving? And then God said something that I know for a fact probably drove him crazy. And this was it right here. He said, I've given it to somebody who doesn't just listen, who doesn't just pay attention, but I literally gave it to one of your neighbors. I gave it to somebody who was better than you, not less than you, not worse than you, not... I gave it to somebody who was better than you. 
a better individual. Do you know how painful that would have to be for God to literally give, for God to literally tell you there's somebody better than you. There's somebody greater than you. There's somebody more pure than you. There's somebody who listens to me and adheres to me. Listen to one better than you. He who is the glory of Israel does not lie or change his mind. For he is not a human being that he should change his mind. Saul basically told um, Samuel, basically told Saul, God ain't going to change his mind about it either. He already said it. He already was looking for somebody else. He already was looking for another man. He already was looking for another woman. He already was looking for another chance, another opportunity he was already looking for. Okay, so let's look at this right here. So it says, um, verse 30, And Saul replied, I have sinned, but please honor me before the elders of my people and before Israel. Come back with me so that I may worship the Lord your God. So Samuel went back with Saul and Saul worshiped the Lord. Listen, listen. Saul replied, I have sinned, honor me before the elders of my people and before Israel. Come back with me so that I may worship the Lord, your God. And then Samuel went back with him. There's a couple of reasons why Samuel went back with him. Samuel went back with him because he's a prophet. He's smart. He's intelligent. He can see. He can hear from God. He can see. And what Samuel said was, let me just go back with this crazy man. Let, let me just be seen with him. Let me just be seen with him because he's crazy. Let me just go out here in front of the people. Let, 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 let the people think he, he's good. Let the people think he's right. Let the people think that God is still with him. Because you know, a lot of times when people see that you're with the prophet, they think that because the prophet is with you, that you're in good standing with God. But baby, don't ever, no matter how powerful we are as prophets, don't you ever think that just because we powerful as prophets and apostles, I told that we replace God. Baby, don't worry. A lot of y'all want the prophet to be seen with you, but you never ask for God to be seen with you. You repented to the prophet, but you never repented to God. That was the problem right there with Saul. Mm-hmm. 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 He said, honor me. I just want you to honor me before these people. Because they know you got a good name. They know you got a good reputation. They know your name ain't messed up. They know your name not jacked up. They know that you've been prophesying since you was a young boy. They know they, they know you from Africa. They, they know you are from Africa. They know they know you from London. They, they know where you're from in the States in a place where it's come from pollution. They, they know where you come from in Israel, in, in, in Galilee, in Bethlehem. They know where you come from. They know where you come from in Europe. Mm, 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 mm. They know where you come from. They know you have a good name, a good report. They know that you are not less than an infidel. They know that you take care of not just your, your children, but you take care of the family. You take care of the ministry, the church. You take care of people who are associated with, with you. No matter what genre or whatever you do for a living, it doesn't have to be preaching. It doesn't have to be prophesying. It doesn't have to be any of those things. But when people can see that you take care of the people around you and that you love the people around you, you have a good reputation and a good rapport. People are like, but he was seen with him and they went somewhere together. Okay. God rebuked me the other day on that and I ain't messing with God no more on, on none of that. None of that. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I ain't lying. My name too good. So I replied, I have sinned, but please honor me. Before the elders of my people and before Israel, come back with me so that I may worship the Lord your God. So Samuel went back with Saul and Saul worshiped the Lord. And then Samuel said, during the worship, middle of worship, Samuel, the chief prophet said, bring me Agag of the Amalekites 
bring me Agag. Because we know you ain't we know you ain't gonna listen. You're not gonna give him the word. You're not gonna give him the sword. You're not gonna lay the sword to him. So bring him to me. Let, let, let a real prophet talk to him. All right. We know you're not gonna rebuke him for his sins. We we know you ain't gonna do nothing. Agag came to him in chains. Agag came to the prophet's place in chains. And because he was in chains, he thought surely bitterness of death is past because he thought because of his position now and because he was chained up. And I'm telling you, I had this dream and I saw, I saw these things, and I saw that big old huge chain like that. Mm -mm. I saw that chain like that, and God, and then I saw a plant that was connected to it, where somebody had literally bought the plant and put it in my front yard, and it was connected to a chain, and then another plant, and God let me know, I, 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 I ain't about to give y'all that. Mm, 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 mm. Mm, 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 mm. But Samuel said, as the sword, as your sword, this is what he said, as your sword has made women childless. Your sword is the one who went around here telling everybody to get an abortion, killing everybody's babies, doing all these things to everybody. Your sword did it. He says, so will your mother be childless. I don't believe in abortions. That's why I don't play with it. Every, every child I have gotten pregnant with, they're here. And Samuel put Agag to death before the Lord at Gilgal. And then Samuel left Ramah but Saul went up to his home in Gibeah of Saul. Until the day Samuel died, he did not go to see Saul again. Though Samuel mourned him, and the Lord regretted that he had made Saul king over Israel. Talk about love. Everybody think, that love gotta look like this love looks like that love 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 looks like you never telling people the truth love looks like you never love only looks like you being loyal as a prophet love only looks like you you never hurt nobody's feeling you never putting people in their place that's what y'all think that that, that that love is that's what y'all think this man Saul got in trouble for another reason he made a man shed blood that was holy Samuel put a gag to death that was Saul's job. Saul was the king. Not it wasn't Samuel. It wasn't Samuel's job. It was Saul's job. And Samuel loved Saul. So much so until he was crying and crying and grieving and mourning Saul. Saul wasn't dead, he was just rejected. But Samuel knew it was his anointing. It, it was the anointing of his of his vow that was poured on that man. It was his hands that was laid on him. Mm, 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 mm. It was his spirit that was put on that man. It was his spirit that made him prophesy and speak in unknown tongues and walk in the power of God and walk in the light of day and walk in the counsel of God. It was the, it was Samuel's spirit on Saul. It was his heart. He loved him. You don't believe me? You don't believe that he loved him and it, his, his feelings, his emotions, his heart was with him and all that was with him? Then let's go look at Elijah. When Elijah said to Gehazi, was that Gehazi? Did not my heart go with you when you went? Or did not my spirit go with you when you went? See, you can't hang under the prophet for so long. You can't be attached and connected to the prophet so long and, and y'all not cling and click and come together. And, but even though you're close, even though you're compatible, even though you're husband and wife, even though you got to obey the, 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 the prophet, you got to be respectful. You got to respect him. You got to respect how he wants things done. 
You got to respect the word of the Lord through him. And if you don't agree with him, it'd be better you walk away silently. Close the door. Shh. Be quiet. Close the door silently. Don't say nothing back to him. Just leave. But don't disrespect God's prophets. The Bible says, until the day Samuel died, he did not go to see Saul again. Talking about a never look back. I, I, I question some of you prophets that always got to keep looking back. You, you keep looking back at people who God rejected. You keep crying, keep saying, no, come on, come on, come on. Uh, 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 God said, no, God didn't say anything. God said they rejected. They're disrespectful. They're disobedient. They don't listen. That's why I had to go off the other week. Don't, don't ever come getting misconstrued. I don't, I don't play with God. Don't play that manipulation with me. Don't be telling me I'm bound and connected to nobody. I have the voice and the word of the Lord for myself. And I know when God is speaking to me. And I know what God has said to me. And when God tells you to be with this man. When God tells you to be with that woman. When God tells you to go to that church. When God tells you to be connected to that person. You do what God tells you to do. But if they don't receive you. Shake the dust off your foot and keep it moving. And tell God. God I can't go. They won't, they won't, they won't accept me. They, they didn't respect. They, they will not. So what am I supposed to do? Didn't you say the righteous are as bulls of lion? Why are they acting like snakes? Samuel loved them.